I think one of the biggest misconceptions about coming out to do your own business is freedom. You know, people think that when you do your own thing, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. And that's really cool. Here's the reality. Coming out to do your own business means you're working 24 hours a day. Recently, in the last couple of weeks, I've been getting people coming up to me and having chats with me and they all wanted to talk about the same thing. Uh, they were all thinking of leaving their jobs and coming out to do their own thing, you know, start a business and be their own boss and so on. And I think there are a number of reasons behind it. Some of them were disillusioned with their jobs. Some of them were looking for more meaning and more purpose, uh, more satisfaction in their careers. Some of them just wanted to make more money, um, be their own boss, you know. Um, and for whatever reason that you're thinking of leaving, if you are, I think that's, that's fine. It doesn't really matter the reasons why, as long as you're clear on the reasons why. Knowing why you want to leave is one thing. Knowing what to expect is another. So for the people who are thinking of coming out and striking out on their own, you know, be your own boss, um, there's a difference, I think, between freelancing and starting your own business. So a question that you should ask yourself is, do you want to start your own business or do you want to be a freelancer? It's the difference between having somebody under your employment versus doing everything on your own. Uh, uh, solopreneur versus an entrepreneur, I suppose, if you want to look at it that way. I think the biggest misconception for coming out and striking out on your own is freedom. A lot of people think that coming out to do your own business means you've got the freedom to do what you want whenever you want. There is a certain amount of freedom, but it also means that you're on the job pretty much 24 hours. It's because when you come out and start your own business and be your own boss, you have no job security. You may not literally be doing work 24 hours a day, but you're working 24 hours a day. There is really no luxury for you to call it a day and say, I'm going to stop thinking about work. You might try, but it's really difficult. Well, for me, at least. So if you want to come out and start your own thing, you've got to be ready for at least two to three years of having less money than you anticipated. And for some of us, less money than you even need. When I first started off a couple of years ago, well, 20 years ago to be exact, um, if I remember correctly, I was probably drawing a salary of about three to 400 ringgits a month. And that wasn't near enough to get what I wanted and what I, what I wanted to buy, the luxuries that I wanted, nowhere near. Um, and it took us about three to four years before we got to a stage where we could afford ourselves a decent salary. So that's something that you have to take into consideration because it is a big factor, especially if you're not a millennial, or you're not a young person and you've got commitments. Having realistic expectations of what being your own boss is like, I think is really, really critical. There are a lot of online media that will tell you, hey, nothing like being your own boss. And, and that's true. But you've got to also deal with the other side of the coin. There is nothing like being your own boss. It needs a huge, huge amount of discipline. So if you're not a disciplined person, I would not recommend doing that. Now, I was saying earlier that the large majority of people that come out that start their own businesses. And we, we hear of success stories all the time, right? Hollywood, Facebook, Twitter, so good, so grand, having the time of my life, you know, earning money on the beach, uh, having a, a cocktail in my hand. We hear of those stories all the time. Uh, we don't seldom hear of people who don't make it. And the reason is pretty simple. Most people who don't make it don't want to tell people that they didn't make it. What do you do if your business venture doesn't take off? What do you do if it fails? What do you do if I, after two years, I cannot make enough money to sustain myself, sustain my family? What do I do when my savings run dry and I can no longer draw on them um, to, to, to live, to eat? What do I do? And there have been quite a number of uh, my acquaintances that have had to go back to the job market. So before you decide to go into business, I think you also have to have at the back of your head, how are you going to deal with it if this particular business doesn't kick off? 
Are you going to start off another business, find another um, venture capitalist? Or are you going to go back to the workforce? What kind of mentality are you going to have? What kind of attitudes are, are you going to have to deal with? And so on and so forth. Because it's all well and good to say, I'm going to jump in 100%. But you've also got to be ready if the 100% isn't enough. And therein lies another set of problems. Because in order for a successful business to happen, you, you're going to need at least two to three years for it to even gain any traction at all. Uh, and in that two to three years, if it doesn't gain traction after two to three years, you're going to find that when you go back into the job market, you are you're two to three years behind the peers who didn't leave the job market. So having been a business owner for the last 20 years, would I go back into the job market? I probably wouldn't. Um, it's, it's been extremely fulfilling. It's been extremely adventurous. Uh, but I'm the type of person who's going to tell you, but, 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 <laughs> but I'm the type of person who's going to call a spade a spade. It's not going to be easy. And you've got to be able to deal with the reality of things. Would I take a person who's gone out, tried to do their own business, didn't quite work out, and then now trying to come back and get, their, get a, a job where they left off? And the answer is, hmm, I'm going to borrow a leaf from Facebook and say it's complicated. Because there, there have been a number of businesses that I have uh, been involved in that have been um, award-winning, but not necessarily financially um, successful. And uh, there are quite a number of startups that have been that way. So it's sometimes not about whether you've succeeded or not, it's what you gain out of it. And if I can draw value from what you gain, why not? <laughs>